Okay, here was my problem. Uh, I've got, I, I'm in a cabin in the forest here right now. Um, it's at 6,000 feet, beautiful place. And noise uh, is S2, S3 on bad days. It's really nice up here. But I have a home in the valley too, uh, in uh, the Phoenix area. So I like to remote up to here in order to, you know, have, a, first of all, have nice antennas as opposed to a little, little lot in Chandler. So here's the deal. Um, not only are we, are we at 6,000 feet in the cool forest where the noise level's low, but the lightning is high. We have uh, lightning storms that can get pretty horrendous um, because, well, the rim that we're near, I think is full of copper and it, uh, it really likes that. Anyway, so let me show you what I did. Uh, the deal is I, I've got a 7300, I'll show you, and I want it to be connected, but I want to be able to disconnect it from remote, and I figured out how to do that. Got that working. So let me show you. Okay, uh, and you know, i got to show off. I have quite the station here. You know, it uh, keeps me... Uh, Keeps me out of trouble, not that you can get into that much trouble from here anyway. Here's the 7300, which just about all of you have, okay? That I didn't mind having hooked to the antenna as a sacrificial radio in case lightning struck, but I really don't want to do that either. So I use a remote control system called RemoteTX.net. Uh, Marcus, the, the creator, is a really cool guy. And basically, he came up with a system that allows me to remote control without having to change anything in my router. I can't use ports on, on this rural network that we have. Uh, they don't allow it. So he's got a central server, and as long as that is the way it's set up, you don't need uh, uh, ports on a system. So anyway, so here's all the remote control stuff. As you can see, you know, the radio and everything's on the same. If I come over here and change, um, you know, move it up in frequency, it's, it's changing over there too. So anyway, the remote control works. That's great. Um, I can, you know, I can tune it. I can do all kinds of stuff with it. So that, that's pretty awesome. Okay. That said, here's the Raspberry Pi that runs that remote control. Now I've opted to have um, relays on it. There's four relays here um, doing the, uh, the controlling. Um, Marcus has set it up that so there's, there's three things you can switch on and off. Uh, if you want and I want so those are hooked up <clears throat> So that's pretty cool uh, Raspberry Pi takes about as much power as an electric clock. So there you go Now this is where all my antennas come in. Uh, I call that the bulkhead and every time a storm rolled in I go over and unscrew the connectors and screw them back in again the the I even have them color-coded so I don't even have to think about it so um so to, to not have to do that all the time and to be able to do that remotely, I built this. Now keep in mind that this is a prototype. Um, I'm already thinking of ways to, let me turn the volume down here. I'm thinking of ways to make it much, much smaller and even marketable. Um, so let me explain what's here. Uh, this is my remote antenna disconnect, not a switch, a disconnect. Okay, it's got a, an activator there, which isn't really that expensive, but it will actually pull um, that piece of metal back one foot. So it will actually disconnect the antenna and bring the cable a foot away from the other connector. Uh, Maybe overkill, but hey, why not? All right, and then I use two, two things from shelves, um, from drawers. These right here uh, are normally the things that are on the sides of drawers that you open and close. Okay, and they're not very stable being mounted like this. You're going to find that there's a lot of, a lot of play in it this way. So it's a bad idea, but, um, but it's a functional idea for a prototype. So it works. So that lets, uh, that lets that arm pull this back and forth. That handle thing there you see is just to keep them at right angles. And it almost works, um, sort of. The little blue things that you see, I, I 3D printed, I designed and printed those keep the thing in line. So since it's so floppy, um, when it's closing, um, I want it to line those up and center everything that's so it can slide into the connectors. Now, what we've got here 
is some special connectors I bought that are SO239s on that side and slide on PL259s on the other. Um, and that's a lightning arrestor, nothing special about that. You could just as easily have another um, uh, uh, angle iron on the other side with um, uh, just uh, uh, barrel connectors. But I wanted to, I, I have these lightning arresters, so I will, will probably put ground straps on those, of course. Um, so there you go. Now that, uh, in order to make that work, you need to give it 12 volts and, and you give it uh, uh, positive 12 volts, uh, makes it go in one direction and then you, you reverse the polarity and makes it go the other direction. In order to do that, you need a double pull, double throw switch. Um, these switches are not double pull, double throw. They're single pull, double throw. So what I've done is I've shorted these two out underneath the board that so when one is controlled by the by the Pi, the other one goes on too. So they're both hooked up to the same port and when I, t when I trigger it, it triggers both of them at the same time. Um, so hence, two single pole double throws gives me double pole double throw. So I've got it set up, uh, wired up here that so um, when I tell it to, it uh, either gives me a positive or a negative, uh, or one, one way or the other um, voltage switches, um, polarity switch, this so I can open and close this. Now, I'm gonna show you this also. Um, this is the battery that's going to be hooked up to it, um, and it will actually control this. I do not want the power to come off of the mains to control this, and the reason why is I've got this set up um, where if the power fails and the Raspberry Pi shuts down, it automatically pulls the pulls the uh, the thing back, and it can only do that if there's power, and the power will come from the battery. So if the mains go bad or not go bad, go off, um, uh, the antennas will pull back, and it's a good chance that one of two things happened. Um, there's a storm and it's cut our power, which happens occasionally, hence the solar panels that, you know, keep this battery charged. Um, or some idiot spent too long at the bar and hit a foam pole. They do that up here a lot. So, so that's the setup. That's how I have everything set up here. Um, now let me show you how cool this is. I'm gonna come over and uh, one, of the, one of the pages that, uh, that he has on here is called setup and from setup there's three settings for plug one two three that normally turns on and off this re this relay this relay or this relay this one is reserved if you have a Elecraft station that it needs a relay in order to turn it on and off remotely um, the 7300 just uses the USB port so it doesn't it doesn't need this other one anyway so that's why I shorted these two out is so I can use them for what I'm about to do so, from remote, and this by by the way is my is my uh, my pad not connected to anything except Wi-Fi, so I could be anywhere in the world. I'm going to tap on plug one. There we go, and it activated this. It's pulling the um, the coax uh, connectors apart. Pretty cool, huh? So it's pulling those apart. It's gonna go back a ways. It's gonna go back you know, about 12 inches. Um, so that's good. Now you can see better those two blue things that I printed out, which make it line up. When those, when those little missiles go into, the, into these holes, it quickly lines them up on both sides so they're exactly right to plug into these. Now, I'm gonna Think about I'm thinking about marketing something like this, but it won't be anywhere near this big. Uh, it might be almost as long, but it's going to be a lot narrower. And I'm looking at uh, 3D printer parts to do it, so the the accuracy is going to be like you know in the um, uh, frac fractions of a millimeter. So I may not even need these. So um, I mean I, I want to design it this so it doesn't. It may be all 3D printed for all of this. Uh, the connectors you know, all connect to 3D things that, that lock together, which would be cool. 
Um, so it's disconnected now, and as you can as you can hear, the antenna is not on it anymore. It's very quiet. I'm going to leave it turned up, and I'm going to hook it back up again. So I just press the. Come on. My finger doesn't always work on this thing. There we go. Now it's going the other direction. And you'll see how it lines everything up here. Um, those little, little bullets. Bullets go into those slots and line up the connectors. And you can hear the radio. Let's hook back up again. So there you have it. Now a little little plug for for uh, Remote TX. Um, it's a it's an awesome awesome very very reliable um, way to do remote control. And if you look at my web page, uh, you'll see that I also make a keyer that works with his system. That so you can, it has a knob for tuning. Uh, it's an electronic keyer. It'll key your rig directly, or you can remote control. You can remote it through his system here. This so basically you can use paddles and you can run CW with a with a radio remotely. So imagine having your cell phone and uh, and uh, a little keyer plugged into it, and um, you know little little tiny paddles, and there you go. You've got a completely portable CW station, and uh, and you can even control whether or not your antenna is connected from remote. Uh, or if you're, you, you get out of the movies and you go, oh, man, there's a storm, I did not know that. You can pull out your phone and disconnect your antennas at home. So, pretty awesome. I don't think any, I've seen other people do something like this, but I'm, I'm thinking about marketing it. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I like the idea, and I certainly have the need for it. So, so there you go. And let me, let me demonstrate the, the last little bit here. I told you that if the power fails, that'll automatically disconnect the antenna. So I'm gonna go over here to this Raspberry Pi, which is controlling the station. I mean, that's what this is talking to, and, and it's connected to the 7300 through the USB. I'm gonna simulate a power failure by unplugging the power to this Raspberry Pi. And here she goes, she's disconnecting the antennas. So there you have it. I'm thinking I thought of everything, but I didn't. Of course, no, uh, something will go wrong, but, uh, but that's cool. By the way, when I go remote with this, uh, before I leave, I set up a little $20 wise camera right here that's so I can see my screen and my, my, uh, um, I can see the, the spectrum scope or fish finder, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, I think I'm going to probably set another one up this so I can make sure the antenna is disconnected. Although, if I listen to this, I can pretty much tell that, you know, there's no no antenna on it. So that's good. So it's in the parked position and um, perfectly safe during storms. Anyway, leave messages. Let me know, let me know what you think. Um, if you can think of something else I should add to it, or, you know, what I've forgotten. Um, uh, whether or not you'd be interested in something like that if I was to build it. Um, yeah, let me know. And uh, 73s, everybody.